So uh, Brock Lesnar re-ups uh, with the WWE. Uh, it's, I saw that. Yeah, it I seemed, saw that. It seemed as if, though, that it was a collision course, that, that it was going to be Frank Mir. Was it going to be Frank Mir? I know Frank wanted the fight. Did you want the fight, and how close was it coming from happening? Were you guys on the inside at all uh, in which, you know, you were told, listen, if he comes back, it is going to be you guys. Let's wrap up this trilogy here. What's so, uh, you know, how, what was uh, you and Frank's take on this when you heard the news? You know, we were, uh, we were upset about the news, and uh, one of the biggest reasons we were so upset about the news is you look at, look at Frank Mir's growth as a fighter, um, throughout the years, and I know in his last fight against Brock Lesnar, he did get caught in a, in a position of wrestling where he got his arm caught behind his back and got pounded out, and that, that was brutal. I mean, that was terrible. And uh, you take somebody like Frank Nair, who's now dedicated four or five years to wrestling, four or five years in wrestling is a lot of time between fights. I mean, the, the amount of growth that Frank Nair's had, I mean, he went against Daniel Cormier in his fight, never got taken down. So you're talking about a guy who's not getting taken down by a Daniel Cormier. You're talking about a guy who actually took down Alistair Overeem. How many guys have shot in and taken down Alistair Overeem in the last five fights? You know, Alistair Overeem doesn't find his way to the ground. He has a he has an incredible, incredible base. And uh, so we were we were sad about that fight. Uh, Frank, his hands have obviously improved drastically, but his wrestling has improved has improved tremendously and uh i think that i think that would have been a great fight for frank i think it would have been a great fight for the fans especially to see something like let's let's just say an ultimate card when we're talking about uh the guys we got two wwe guys that everybody's been talking about or ww whatever right <laughs> you got you got uh brock lesnar and then you got what's his name that everybody's talking about cm punk um yeah punk now, could you imagine a fight card where you got Frank Mir versus Lesnar and CM Punk versus Carlos Condit or Johnny Hendricks or I don't know, even an older uh, an older legend that maybe is maybe is a little lower on the scheme? And they did that at Madison Square Garden when it opens up in like August or September. That yeah. would be wild. Yeah, it would have been it would have been sick. Unfortunately, Ricky, we only got a minute left uh, here. I really enjoyed this uh, this conversation. Look forward to doing it again. But I see that Todd Duffy didn't waste any time. Once he saw the Brock was out of the picture, Todd Duffy was on Twitter, not being disrespectful, uh, but basically putting his hand up and saying, hey, "Excuse me, Mr. Mir, I want to step into the octagon with you guys." You know, Mir has fought in the best. He's a cha he's been a champion. It's about big money fights. Um, no disrespect to Todd Duffy, but is this is this is this in your guys' wheelhouse right now? Or are you looking for something bigger? You know, I think we've been looking for something a little bit bigger than Todd Duffy, uh, especially where Frank's at in his career and what he's been doing. I just don't know if uh, Todd Duffy's as big of a draw as the guys that Frank Mears fighting. I think that that only brings uh, Frank to Todd Duffy. Win or lose, Todd Duffy can then say, "I fought a legend like Frank Mears." as opposed to uh, Frank, you know, when he, when he beats Todd Duffy. I mean, what did he get out of that? Hey, Ricky, I really enjoyed this, man. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us early in the morning uh, in Las Vegas at Nevada time. I really appreciate it. I look forward to doing this again, man, and the best of luck, huh? Hey, Gabe, thanks so much. Hey, anybody out there who wants to, uh, to follow me out there, please uh, check me out at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Ricky Lundell. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the time. There's uh, Ricky Lundell. Man, we could have spoke for hours. You can tell just an educated, educated man when it comes to the sport. And still a dude. He hasn't even hit 30 years old yet. You just imagine the knowledge that, uh, that he has com uh, comprised uh, over the years. A very, very impressive uh, young man and a real badass uh, as well. All right, uh, so we'll come back with our videos of the week. And you don't want to miss uh, this week's uh, videos of the week. They're all off the hook good. Thanks to Ricky Lundell for joining us on the program. Let's get to our videos of the week. And uh, they're, all, they're all damn good uh, this week. I'm looking forward to seeing them right now myself. Let's start off with uh, what I think is the best elbow that I've ever seen in my life. It's a vicious knockout with the speed and precision, man, of a punch. 
you know, wicked, wicked, wicked elbow right here. Lightning click. You hear the sound. Listen. You hear the cuck. It's like a baseball on a bat, man. Look at that. Out of nowhere. Boom. That's, 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 that's awesome, man. That's freaking awesome. That's jaw breaking uh, right there. You know what else is awesome? Although kind of amateurish and uh, petty, but nevertheless awesome in a lowbrow way. Nothing wrong with a little brawl after a kickboxing event. Yeah, you know, what, uh, what makes a brawl after a kickboxing event uh, better? When the ring girl wants in and starts choking people out. Check out the girl in the bikini. Yeah, she wants in. She's wearing high heels and unfortunately we can't show it all to you. It's like four minutes, but she actually gets into the ring. She eventually gets into the ring. It's a big, big brew. <laughs> and uh, this ring girl is a badass. I want to see if we can track this girl down and uh, get her on the program. Now, speaking of badasses, I know that Ronda Rousey is going to be fighting Beth Correa. Is, uh, you know, and Ronda just recently stated, I got 99 problems, but a Beth ain't won. And I would agree with that assessment. I think we found, I think it's to the point, and forget about fighting men, that's just stupid stuff. But I think, that, I think it's, it's to the point now where the women that are fighting Ronda Rousey should be allowed to use weapons. That's fair. It's not men against Ronda. It's, it's women against Ronda, but the woman is allowed a weapon of her choice. Sort of like, you know, Triple H with, you know, the sledgehammer. You know, Sting with a baseball bat. Or, you know, wushu style. This chick is, you know, this is, uh, this is some ultimate badass ninja stuff right here. We'll take you out with some, uh, some good old-fashioned wushu. Other than that, you're on your own.